why don't we shift gears and talk about something cool like fer Ferraris. <laughs> so there's this guy who loves sports cars with polluting exhausts. A very climate friendly guy, right? <laughs> he was studying at uni and living a pretty normal life. He would drive everywhere in his petrol car with a very loud free exhaust. His goals and aspirations in life, having a more expensive and polluting car each decade until retiring with a Ferrari, but not an electric one. <laughs> and I'm curious, can I ask you to raise your hand if you think this guy is somehow likely to help inspire more people to take climate action and with whom you would like to engage? Okay, that's very interesting. Hold on to that for now. What's that you need? He had heard about climate change, of course, but it had nothing to do with him. You know, all of those statistics and images of polar bears were way too abstract and far away for him. But he had a friend from an African country who one day invited him to visit. When our guy arrived, he saw a totally different reality. People living in poverty, pollution everywhere, lack of opportunities. Not even a McDonald's. How crazy is that? And our guy was surprised when locals treated him like family from day one and started sharing their challenges with him. He learned that people in the area were struggling to get water and they had to go further and further away to find it. Life was hard. After a couple of months, he went to live in a country in Europe. Since he had been moved by the social challenges he had seen, he started volunteering for a charity. He started running events with university professors and PhD students around different global issues. One of the talks was about renewable energy and how it is crucial to tackle climate change. Our guy was very inspired by the speaker and started surrounding himself with people who had an interest in sustainability. After a couple of months, he felt he needed to do his bit for the planet and he looked into ideas to live more sustainably. And he started taking actions like getting a reusable water bottle or eating less meat. After a couple of years, he even decided to sell his car. <laughs> yes, the one with the loud and polluting exhaust. He didn't feel it was aligned with his values anymore. Eight years had passed since his trip to the African country. After changing a lot of his lifestyle, he realized that he wasn't changing much in the world. Yes, his life was completely different, but everything around him remained the same. And he came to the realization that he needed to collaborate more with others. <laughs> At that point, he created a global platform to connect people who also wanted to create a positive impact in the world. And he started being very active on social media to try and inspire more people to take climate action. And you wouldn't believe this, but to his surprise, he was invited to give a talk at a pretty cool sustainability event. You may have heard of it. It was called Innovation Zero. <laughs> that guy who loved polluting exhausts and Ferraris, it's me. <laughs> I'm sure most of you saw it coming. <laughs> and that was not my car, by the way. I wished back then. <laughs> it's funny because this picture is like 15 years old. And you won't believe it, but if I shave, I look exactly the same. <laughs> and that's exactly why my girlfriend won't let me shave. <laughs> so let's go back to that question I asked you earlier. Can you raise your hand if you think this guy is somehow likely to help inspire more people to take climate action and with whom you would like to engage? Okay, quite a different response now, right? <laughs> and let me ask you another question. Can you raise your hand if you think you would have come here today to Innovation Zero if you had never taken any climate action before, regardless of how big or small? No one, right? That's because to take climate action, we need to go through different stages first. 
So let me introduce you to the Climate Funnel, a framework with different stages to communicate more effectively and intentionally about climate change and inspire more people to take climate action. And I get really excited at this point, as you can tell. <laughs> so if we go back to my own story and go through the funnel together, when I was at uni, oh, does this work? Yeah. When I was at uni, just caring about Ferraris and polluting exhausts, I was outside the climate funnel, very unaware of climate change, even if I had heard about it. When I went to Africa, I became aware at a personal level and I entered the funnel. When I started running events for the charity, I developed the motivation to start taking climate action. That led me to start taking low impact actions first, like getting a reusable water bottle or eating less meat. After taking lots of those, I built the mindset to start taking high impact actions. The wh wh this is uh, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> high impact actions like creating a global platform for change makers, becoming a climate fresh facilitator or a content creator to try and inspire more people to take climate action. So as you can see, I have moved through the different stages of the climate funnel. I just didn't wake up one day and start taking high impact actions. And hopefully, you can also see how you have moved through it too. Because you wouldn't be here today if you hadn't gone through some of those stages already. Unless your employer forced you to come, of course. <laughs> but hopefully that's not the case for most of you. Now, let's look at what each stage means. Outside the funnel, on the far left, we've got deniers and unaware people. Deniers or dismissive people not only don't believe the science, but are actively pushing to discredit it. Unaware or disengaged people lack exposure to the issue. Maybe they've heard about climate change, but they know very little about it and how it affects them. When they become aware at a personal level, they enter the funnel. People who are aware but not motivated typically have doubts and questions, see climate change as a distant issue, or it is simply not high up in their priority list because they're busy. Motivated people are those who have developed an interest in the issues and solutions, but are lacking a little push from others or the resources to take action. When people build enough motivation, they typically start taking low impact actions. Things like the reusable water bottle, driving less or eating less meat. After people take a lot of low impact actions, they tend to realize that those are necessary, but not enough. And that we need more high impact actions. The ones taken by people in a coordinated way and focusing on multiplication and systems change. And it's important to mention that high impact actions, also called collective actions, are still actions taken by individuals. It's not about sitting back and relax and leaving responsibility to governments and corporates. It's about you and I taking action collectively. Things like joining movements, creating movements, inspiring people to move forward in the climate funnel, voting, protesting, talking to your politicians, making your company truly sustainable. The options are endless. And just out of curiosity, can I ask you to raise your hand if you feel you are already at this high impact action stage? Okay, I mean, to me, you all are, because you are here today, joining a movement. How amazing is that? So, how do we use the climate funnel as a framework? Well, the first step is to identify where you are in the funnel, which you just kind of did. That will help you understand your own position and realize that everyone out there is in a different journey. Then, the idea is to use the climate funnel next time you engage in a conversation. Whether it is with a neighbor, a colleague, or a customer, we want to bring everyone on board. And the way we do that is by focusing on three simple steps. First, identify where people are in their journey. Second, Adapt your message 
to meet them where they are. And third, inspire them to move forward in the funnel. We cannot tell someone who has never heard about net zero to stop flying or go vegan. Like we cannot tell someone who's leading a climate company to just focus on recycling. They can do a lot more than that. Adapting our message is key. So again, let's start outside the funnel on the left, deniers. Research by the Yale Program on Climate Change Communications shows that deniers represent a maximum of 10% of the population in most countries. So what do we do with them? Easy. As climate scientist Catherine Hayhoe recommends, just ignore them and move on. It's almost impossible to change a denier's mind, so it's much better to focus our energy on the remaining 90% of the people instead. Now, for people who are unaware of climate change, unaware, <laughs> it's not coming. People who are unaware of climate change or how it affects them, one of the best ways to engage them is by not mentioning the words climate change, even if it sounds counterintuitive. Research by the Potential Energy Coalition found that the best way to get people on board with the climate crisis is to talk like a human, avoiding jargon, numbers, and statistics. Don't talk about decarbonization, net zero, anthropogenic. Instead, talk about pollution, overheating, extreme weather. Especially, keep it super local and relevant to the person you are talking to. There's nothing less relatable for someone who's outside the climate funnel than talking about the polar bears not having eyes or tropical islands going underwater. Instead, find out more about what they care about and ask them about it. Is it air pollution, the river flooding, expensive energy? Ask them more about what matters to them. That's how you can start bringing them into the funnel. Can we bring them into the funnel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, for people who are aware but not motivated yet, <laughs> they typically have doubts and questions, as we've said before. So a good strategy is to continue learning more about them. Because a really good strategy to move people forward in the climate funnel is to develop genuine relationships. When people trust you, they listen to you. That's why communities are so important. And try to find out if they have doubts and questions and help them clarify them without bombarding them with figures and stats. If they see climate change as a distant issue, try to show them how it's happening today in the local area without exaggerating. Slowly, help them build motivation by learning more about the issues that matter most to them. Now, people who are motivated but not taking action yet, they typically say things like, I want to take action, but I don't know where to start. Or, I want to do something, but I feel alone in this battle. Help them by joining forces. Share a few ideas of very easy actions that you can take together. It doesn't matter if they're very low impact. What matters is that they get started so they can build the mindset for more actions. And again, continue building trust and focusing on what matters to them. Is it air pollution? Maybe suggest carpooling to work together. Is it biodiversity? You can suggest putting some bird food in the garden. Is it food waste? You can do compost together. The idea is to bring them from motivation into low impact action. So any action counts, just keep it super easy for them. Now for people who are already taking low impact actions, the first step is to recognize the value of the actions they are taking. Far too often I see people in the low impact action stage stop taking action because other people further ahead in the funnel tell them their actions are not making an impact. Isn't that sad? 
We want to inspire people to move forward in the funnel, not backwards. So the first step is to recognize the value of the actions they are taking, however big or small, because what matters is not just the action itself, but the mindset they are building, which eventually can lead to high impact actions. After acknowledging them, we can suggest a few ideas of higher impact actions, but try not to go to the extreme so they don't feel overwhelmed. Somebody who just ditched plastic straws is very unlikely to go on a climate protest or switch jobs for a climate one. Meet them where they are and inspire them to build to higher impact actions one step at a time. Now, for people who are already taking high impact, high impact actions, the biggest challenge I see is that they tend to remain in their echo chambers just talking to people who are also very advanced in the funnel and arguing whether we should call it climate change or climate crisis. <laughs> if you find yourself talking to somebody who's there, remind them that the highest impact actions we can take are about multiplication and amplification. Things like educating, inspiring, and mobilizing others. Just think about this. According to Fork Ranger, you can make a bigger impact by just inspiring two friends, just two friends, to stop eating beef with you rather than going vegan on your own. Use your voice to create good ripples. <laughs> See, right now, our main problem is that we have too many people outside the climate funnel or in the initial layers. We need to put our energy into bringing a lot more people inside the climate funnel and inspire them to move through it. Our goal is to make the funnel as wide as possible at the end so that we can create big systems change. What we need is an inverted climate funnel where lots of people have gone through the different stages and are taking high impact action. So if you just remember one thing from today, this should be it. Use the climate funnel to inspire more people to take climate action by meeting them where they are in their journey. After all, even a guy who loves polluting exhausts and Ferraris, could one day help inspire more people to take climate action. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Carlos Terra, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We've now got a, a five minute break before we return with a talk on anthropology, a key to effective ESG and sustainability communication. Uh, we just have a few minutes before that one. Uh, if you are planning to leave, please leave in a quiet and calm, cool. orderly fashion. Yes. If you're planning to leave,